Good morning. Hope, good morning. I hope your summer is going great. Still, we are in the virtual world. Hopefully, everything will be back to normal. Hey, before we start, any questions for me? I hope you got a chance to go through the video. Uh, some of you may have, some of you may not have. Uh, I was planning to go through one more time with you guys. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, but before we start, uh, any burning questions? Uh, with no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, can you see my slide? Thumbs up? Yes? Okay, perfect. Uh, so just a little bit background. My name is, Ra I go by Ram. Uh, I'm a faculty uh, at Animal and Food Sciences, OSU. Uh, I teach food science classes, uh, meat science classes. So that, that, that's my area of expertise. So I, I now gave a title, Don't Judge by Burger by its color. Again, we are not going to cook a meat, but uh, I just want to give an overview of some of the uh, importance or issue with the food safe, uh, food waste. So please use your chat function, okay? So how many of you think food waste is a major problem? So please use your chat function. Just type in yes, no, or Z. I can see some chat coming up. I got one yes. So the food set, the food waste, it's a big issue. So that, that's the one thing uh, we're gonna discuss today. Uh, again, we're gonna focus mainly on meat side, how it's gonna affect. So let me ask one more question. What do you think about this one? Again, use your chat function, A, B, Z, D. Again, there is no right or wrong. Feel free to click any A, B, Z, D, okay? So when you go to buy beef, why that beef is red in color? I'm pretty sure some of them are crazy words. Don't worry about it. That's one thing we're gonna talk about today. Well, I got three responses. I got A, A, C. So the meat color, wow, I'm getting good participation, thank you. So I got A, C, A, A, C. Wow, actually one was correct. The answer is my globin. Okay, so if you got it, thumbs up. Uh, if you don't get it, that's perfectly fine. So that's one thing we're gonna to talk today, like why meat is red in color. So for example, every human being or animal so why we live because we consume oxygen. So the oxygen go to the lungs, from the lungs to our body by blood. And from the blood to muscle, it's primarily by a protein called myoglobin. So, so that the myoglobin gives meat red color. So a lot of people think the meat color is due to blood. Of course, it might be very, very thin amount. If you Google it, you may see the meat color is due to companies are in red color. Absolutely no. Uh, you can ask Suri, that's, of course, that's correct. But the myoglobin, that's the reason for red color. So when you go to store, what you see, you like this bright red color. When you keep it for a long time, it turns brown. Do you have any idea how much meat is wasted just due to this color change? Any idea? Take a wild guess. How much meat is wasted in US due to color change? It's close to 350 million pound. 350 million pound. These are good meat to eat. It's almost like if you have an apple in front of you, you cut it. After some time, it turns brown. That doesn't mean it's bad. It's a color change, make sense? So the bright red and brown, that color has nothing to do with the 
whether it has bug, foodborne outbreak, no. So a lot of people think when the meat is brown in color, it's bad. It's primarily a quality change. That's one thing we're gonna do it in that demo. Uh, I'm gonna watch you the video in a minute. So, so the meat color, it's a, people think it's bad and industry is losing a lot of good meat. So that, that's one of area I do research. So, dip, so the meat, I don't know if you cut a steak or if you're in the judging program, if you cut a steak, it might be dark in color, but when you bind with oxygen, it have bright red. When it turns, when you keep it for a long time, it turns brown. So now I'm gonna show that video and connect with you. Uh, what, what was that video about, okay? Hey, can you see my video slide? Thumbs up, oh, thank you. Welcome to our session. Don't judge a burger by its color. Why is meat color red? Why is meat color important? Meat color is important because consumers consider a red product in the grocery store to be more fresh or more appealing. These are the materials that we utilize to help us evaluate meat color. So, here, what we are doing is we extracted that myoglobin. So for example, the myoglobin, the protein that gives red color, it's very, very teeny. So what we did was we separated that protein. Now we're gonna show you how, if you're adding some reagents or what happens naturally in that meat. You may have a dark red, that's due to one form. You may have that bright red, that's to another form. And if you keep that bright ground beef for a long time, it's turned brown. That's another color. But these are all connected reaction. How many of you are in high school? Just raise your hand. Anyone in high school? Okay, thank you. How, how many of you heard about oxidation reduction? Anyone heard about oxygen? Okay, perfect. I can see some hands raising. Uh, if you are not in high school, you will hear in chemistry, oxidation reduction. That one electron, that's reason for million dollar wastage. Make sense? So we're gonna add one ingredient and see how that oxidation reduction happens, okay? So don't worry about these fancy names like pipette, cuvette, don't worry. Imagine you are making uh, cookies at home. You need to have a measuring cup. You need to have a spoon, just think like that. So the pipette, it's almost like a spoon. Uh, when you work in lab, you won't use a spoon, but we use pipette. Uh, why we use pipette? It's very, very accurate. So if you are cooking uh, cookies or cake, you can have a little bit more or less, doesn't matter. But when you work in a lab, you want to be accurate. So that's why you may see some fancy names. Oh, don't worry about it, okay? What is the purpose of spectrophotometer? It helps us to determine the color of the meat. What is myoglobin? Myoglobin is the protein which determines meat color. So it indicates whether it's red or brown. What does the brown color represent? That is met myoglobin or just coloration. This is so the brown color we see, let's say if we have a brown colored steak, we can extract that myoglobin. So that's why it's brown color. Now we're gonna show you, if you're adding a small ingredient, it will change the color very, very immediately. So it's very quick, watch carefully, okay? Don't blink now, just kidding something that we don't want in our meat products. So this is a reducing agent. So for example, now we have the metform, 
we're going to add a drop of this solution, then it becomes red in color. For example, in your day-to-day -day lives, I'm sure your parents might be telling, hey, eat fruits, or your doctors may tell, hey, you need to include vegetables and fruits in your diet. Why? Because some of the fruits has really good reducing properties. So that's why uh, you may stay healthy. So the same thing, we're gonna show it. So this one is a reducing agent. We're gonna make a liquid solution, add a drop. Then that brown color instantaneously changed to a red color, okay? Did you see that color change? It changed from brown to red because that dietinite is a reducing agent. What does the red color represent? The red color is oxymyoglobin, or the bright cherry red pigment that you typically see in the grocery store. Here, the samples are then put into the spectrophotometer to evaluate the color differences. So the spectrophotometer, for example, uh, we can tell it's a bright red, brown in color, but we want to quantify it. So we want to know how much is the color. So that's the machine, it measures the color. For example, if you want to go to Home Depot or Laos or Walmart, and if you want to buy a specific paint, uh, I don't know if you've seen, they have a mixing uh, place. Uh, actually, they look at the color or you can quantify the color. Then you can buy a, a specific paint. So same principle is used here, use the spectrophotometer to measure or quantify color. So that was the first uh, experiment. Any questions before we move to the second one? Come on, feel free to ask any questions, okay? I'm pretty sure you have some questions in your mind. There is not right or wrong, come on. You can type in or if you want to say loud, that's perfectly fine. Looks like I scared you guys. It's a fun thing. I'm pretty sure you guys are thinking, as while thinking, I'll go to the next one. Okay, I got a question, thank you. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Uh, we, as a faculty, we have different jobs. So, uh, I'm really enjoying this session. We have some students doing research. Uh, their projects are going well. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Wow, okay. So I noticed earlier the slide, the meat was purple in color. That, that's a great question. Uh, the reason why I showed that purple color, uh, theoretically, if you have a perfect condition and if you vacuum package, uh, meat really looks like purple. Uh, in the real world, you probably won't see it because there is oxygen everywhere. So let's say if you cut a steak, it will bind with the myoglobin and you'll see a dark red color. Uh, for example, if you buy a uh, tenderloin steak, often it's vacuum packaged. You probably won't see that purple color again, but you'll see a dark red. But once you, one, when you buy the all wrap one, it will have a bright red. So it's more like a schematic presentation. You will never see a purple colored steak. Great question, great question. So while you're thinking, I'm gonna to switch to the uh, next one. So I'm gonna ask you a question first, then I'll show you the demonstration, okay?
not not this one let me put another one not this one okay what do you think about this one a b c Yes, so I got some response. Perfect. So uh, what we're going to show is like now we're going to show you a video how we can test uh, the quality of the food. Okay. Let me switch my screen. Okay. What did you learn? Today we're going to talk about meat tenderness. Why is meat tenderness important? Meat tenderness is important to improve the overall eating experience. We typically want a more tender or juicy product. These are the materials used to help us measure meat tenderness. Why do you measure the temperature? For two reasons. One is for food safety to reduce the foodborne illnesses. And two is to increase the consumer satisfaction. So what here we are doing is, let's say if you're buying the steak, uh, some of the steaks will be very tender and some of the strip steaks might be tough. So you can taste it and make sure it's tender or you can use the machine. Or another example would be, let's say you are using uh, chips, uh, lace chips or Doritos or Cheetos, uh, what may be your favorite snack. Uh, the companies look for how tough that one, how brittle. You can use your hand and test it or you can chew it, but every person is different. So that's why they use some machine. This, this, that's one thing we're gonna show you how we can measure tenderness using a machine. So that machine is called the texture machine. Uh, there are different names for it, uh, WB shear force, but I just wanted to demonstrate how this machine operates. What is the circle piece of equipment used to cut the meat? That's called a core. It allows us to remove a core or a small section of the meat, which we will later shear to determine the amount of tenderness. The shearing process gives us a force in which to cut the meat, similar to the force utilized to cut meat when you eat it with your teeth. Is that a core? Yes, it is. What is the purpose of measuring shear force? Shear force will cut through the product similar to how your teeth does, which gives us an indicator. So what it does is, did you see that V-shaped node? So it's basically check how much force is required to cut. If it requires more force means it's a tough. If it is so easy to cut, it will be a very, very tender product. You know how much force or how tough the product is when you're consuming it. Which steak is tougher and why? The steak that is well done, or the one with the higher number, is considered tougher. Okay, what did you learn? So that was the second one. Now, any questions about this presentation or the anything you can think of from a quality perspective? I'm sure you may have tasted marshmallow or a hard candy, so there's a difference. Uh, this is a machine used to test. I'm pretty sure you guys are thinking. Uh, I'm gonna show you the next one. So before that, I'm gonna ask you this question. Again, use your chat box. Uh, 
Thank you. I got two response. That's good. B B. Ah, you, you guys are on spot. But one more response. Ah, everyone got right. That's good. Do you think all backed is harmful? No. So the next one we're gonna show you about uh, how we can codify bacteria uh, because. I'm pretty sure everyone heard about foodborne illness, food poisoning. You probably may have got it. I got it. So it, it's very, very common. And it's really, really hard to make food uh, without any bugs uh, because there are a lot of steps involved. So now we're going to show you a video how you can uh, quantify uh, number of bacteria in food. So this test is done by almost all food companies. They need to test it uh, before they ship the product. Food safety and microbial growth. What is the importance of food safety in the evaluation of microbial growth? Food safety is important because it helps to prevent foodborne illnesses or prevents people from getting sick from their food. Is this the equipment that we typically use to evaluate microbial growth or the organisms that might be on your food? What is the purpose of the stomacher? The stomacher is used to help break down the food. Prior to using the stomacher, we weigh out a sample from so this one is an example of a ground beef. You can use any food product, like it can be spinach or lettuce or tomato or cantaloupe, anything you like to test. Basically, some of the steps involved are, let's say you have a ground beef. So the meat is a really good nutritious product. So the bacteria are so happy. Now we're gonna identify the bacteria in an outside environment. So that's why we need to separate it. Then we're gonna grow in a really good media where it will add a lot of nutrient. So if there is more bacteria, you may see bacterial growth. Uh, it might be so like a small spot. We will show you a couple of uh, examples. Then we can really count it, how many bacteria are present. Uh, there are different types of tests if you want to identify is it E. coli or Listeria? Uh, we can do different tests. From the food, and then we put it in a stomacher bag. The stomacher is utilized to help break down that sample. You can see that here. After stomaching the food, we take a small sample and dilute it into test tubes to reduce the amount of microbes in the sample. What is the importance of the plane? The plane helps to sterilize the tube and prevent the microbes from spreading and contaminating the test tube. What are the test tubes used for? The test tubes contain pectin, which is a water-like substance which helps the microbes to grow. allow for the microbes to grow. Currently, they are dried, and by placing the sample with peptum water on the petri film, it allows for hydration of the substance and allows for growth. After placing the sample, the petri film has to be pressed to spread out the microbes for growth. What are the red dots on the petri film? The red dots are the actual colonies for microbial growth. Okay, what did you learn? So that's all about this presentation. Uh, feel free to ask questions. So now we have 10 more minutes, I guess. Uh, anything you can think based on these uh, videos or any of the experiments we did? Any questions for me?
since you are thinking, what do you think about this one? I can use your chat box. Wow, pretty good. So if you look at the USDA or during Thanksgiving, uh, USDA or any health safety, they always send recommendation. Like right? you need to use a meat thermometer, but unfortunate part is most people don't use it. They just look at the color. Uh, but the challenge is some meat will turn brown very quickly. So you may think the meat is well done, but it will it, it may not reach that recommended temperature of 160. So that's called that's one of the conditions that can lead to food safety outbreak. So that's why I put the title Don't Judge the Burger by its color. Uh, if you can use a meat thermometer, I think uh, that's more accurate. Make sense? Hey, feel free to ask any questions about uh, presentation or any of the related topic. I don't know about your background or long-term goal, but uh, food science, it's a pretty neat area. Uh, ton of job, lot of application. Uh, OSU has a program. Uh, uh, you, you, you may check it out. Is there any way to check the tenderness before buying? That, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, that's one thing uh, various companies are trying. That's why uh, sometimes certified tender, uh, the Angus program, uh, they do a lot of testing uh, before selling in the market. Uh, they can do some pretty good uh, prediction. Actually, there are some machines available where we can take it just like, almost like a take a picture with your cell phone. Uh, it will give you how tender that meat is. Uh, so we, as a consumer, we cannot do it, but the uh, industry, they, they are doing it. Good question. Any other questions? Anything related to color or food safety, food micro? If it were a real world, you'd have been in my lab. You can uh, sew all the stuff and you can do it by your hand. But don't worry if, if you're coming to OSU or stop by. We host some high school researchers in our lab. What made you to work in the food science? Great question, great question. A uh, little bit background. Uh, I did my undergrad in animal science, uh, did my master's PhD from University of Connecticut, all the way East Coast. Uh, after my graduation, I like teaching, I like research. Uh, I got an opportunity to work here at OSU. It's been 10 years now. Uh, it, it's a fun thing. It's fun. I enjoy it. So I'm here. Great question. With today's food safety practice, are odds of getting tainted meat high? The food safety in general, like the, some of the techniques the industry is using, it's amazing. Uh, you may still hear like uh, some cases in news, but if you think about the 
total number of meat produced, like billion pounds of meat or billion pounds of fresh produce, uh, it's very, very less. If you look here, like maybe 10 years, like it's a very tricky one because we are using some advanced technologies to detect. Maybe 10 years back, they probably won't detect the uh, as much we do now. So that's why you may still hear food safety issues, uh, but we are making progress. And again, as I mentioned, to get zero foodborne illness, that's a big challenge because a lot of people involved, but there are a lot of rules and regulation coming up that makes the food industry more streamlined and also uh, help to reduce the outbreak. Great question, great question. Great question. So what in the video you show like we are pouring something to the stomach or back. So what we did was you can take any sample. Let's say it can be ground beef, spinach, lettuce. So you put in the stomach or back. Now we want to detach the bacteria from the meat or the lettuce or the spinach to that solution. So the purpose of the solution is two for one to detach that bacteria. And also that solution is a really nutritious media. Why? Because once it is detached, we want to see the bacteria growing. So once you have that bacteria in that solution, then we can grow in that plate. So that's the purpose of adding uh, that solution. That's called the pepton buffer. Uh, it will control the pH change, provide some really good nutrition to the bacteria. Great question, great question. We have a few more minutes. Uh, if you want to stay here, feel free to stay and ask questions. If not, again, thank you very much for your time and thank you for choosing this session. Uh, one more, I got one. Do you usually label uh, equipment? Yes, yes. Uh, because that's uh, one of the mandatory thing when you start working in lab. The reason why you may have a chemical solution, almost like water. Maybe you may have water. So it's more from a safety perspective. Uh, we try to label everything. And also uh, we often get audited by some agencies within the university and also outside. So if you work in a lab, so that's why you may see gloves. And if you're using any uh, harmful chemicals, we may use a goggles, an apron. Those are the basics. So, it's more safety purpose. So we even label distilled water uh, because the water looks lame, maybe acid solution looks same. So one can get confused. So good observation, good observation. So once again, thank you very much. Feel free to leave or follow your 4-H uh, teacher instructor. I uh, appreciate your time and have a great summer. And once classes start, uh, love science, okay? Love science and pursue career in science. We need, we, we need some smart students like you, okay? Good luck. Thank you.